Hello everybody, my name is Fisk31 and in this video I'm going to show you how to get started with a free scoreboard application known as Telescore. Telescore is mainly used for esports and athletic competition uh, for broadcasters or streamers. So if you want to display how much time is left, what the score is, uh, or anything along those lines that you would see on a sporting broadcast, uh, this is the software for you, and of course, it's free of charge and open sourced on GitHub. If you have any questions, need support, or would like to be a helper in this project, join the Discord server link down below. It will also have the download link in the Discord server. I won't put it in the video for the download link just because it might be outdated by the time this video is out. So, when you do get this software downloaded, the first thing you're going to do is unzip the file. So, you have the folder like this. And then you go to the Telescore folder inside, and you'll see the Telescore application uh, right here. Uh, you are able to search for Telescore with the Windows search uh, function. The only reason I advise to be against that is because um, when you do that, uh, there is a few bugs regarding the author system, which I'll show you what uh, right show you that right now. So when you click on it the correct way, either by using the one in the folder or making a shortcut, which you can do by right clicking and um, create a shortcut. You could put this in your desktop or whatever and you could open it up correctly. Um, when, you, when you type it in the search feature and open it up that way, for some reason, the authors do not get listed and there are some buttons that are actually hidden for some reason. So please open it up this way until it is patched. If it gets patched in the near future, uh, I am not sure because I am not the coder. But back to the uh, actual software itself. Um, when you do open it up correctly, you could actually see your past files, uh, if you have any. In my case, I've made some already. So this is what it will look like when you save it. But for now, uh, we'll actually open up a new project. So in this video, I will quickly explain now what each... Uh, component is for the time-based component um, and what you could do with the time-based components and what the properties and connection manager is. In the next video, I will explain the next uh, features, which is the points and stats. Um, but for now, in this video, let's actually drag in two time displays. So the two time displays here, we'll name the first one uh, game clock on the left, and we'll name the one on the right penalty clock. And just so you guys actually know, let me actually quickly do this real quick. Just so it's easier to understand. We'll, uh, we'll have the text right here just so it is easier to under understand because it can get a little confusing as we continue this tutorial. So now you guys know the one on the right is a penalty timer for like something like ice hockey and the one on the left is the game clock. Um, when you click on the game clock, it is going to be set to zero minutes by default and it will be set to counting down. If you want it to count up, there is a stopwatch feature, which I'll show off in a bit. But for now, let's just stick with the ice hockey format of it counting down. Um, so when you click on this, the time display, it's going to be set to zero minutes, zero seconds. If you want to change that, you just go to the default time. You can change it to hours and minutes. You can change it to seconds uh, with tenths of a second. That's what the Z stands for. But just to keep things simple right now, we'll keep it to minutes and seconds. Uh, and just below that, you could type in the default set time. We'll say 10 minute period. And for this one, we'll say a two minute penalty. And just to show you what the other formats can work, we'll have it to minutes, second, seconds. So this one has two minute digits. This one only has one. So that's pretty cool. But now there's currently no way to start this. So in order to start these timers, we have to add in the start time uh, component, which you can do by clicking and dragging this onto the screen. Um, you also want to add, I would recommend just to start off so you can understand easier. I would say these are the four most important buttons here. You have the start, stop, reset, and the set time. But currently if you, uh, push these buttons they currently do nothing because they're not connected to these components so for now let's actually add in a set for both real quick but they still do nothing so how do you connect this 
onto these two components. Well, let's start with the game clock. You click on the start button, it's gonna have a little white highlight around it. And now you have the properties for the start button. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to the connection manager on the bottom right, and there's gonna be two components here currently listed. There's gonna be a game clock and a penalty clock. And you could select either one, but we wanna get the game clock selected right now. So have the game clock selected and click add. When you do that, there's gonna be a remove thing right here, so you can click to remove it, but we want it selected for now, so let's keep it on add. Do the same thing for the other ones. And now all of these buttons on the left are connected to the game clock. So if you hit start, it starts counting down. If you hit stop, it stops. And if you hit reset, because this is set to 10 minutes right here, it'll reset it to 10 minutes. But what if you want to set it to a specific time? Like let's say there is 30 seconds left in the game and you accidentally kept the clock running and now it's at 20 seconds and you want to go back to 30 seconds. Well, this is pretty handy because the type time amount, you could set any custom time you want and just hit set. Just make sure it follows the same format. So in this format right now, it is minutes, minutes, seconds, seconds. Um, and in the uh, type time amount, it is currently set to minute, minute, second, second. You could also change it to hours if you want, but make sure these two are the same to avoid any issues. There are also other buttons like the add and subtract uh, minutes and seconds. Um, basically, it's self-explanatory. We'll add this real quick, actually. If you hit add seconds when it's connected, it just adds in one second. If you subtract it, it subtracts by one second. Um, same thing for minutes, it adds and subtracts by one minute depending on the button you hit. But let's just stick with these four right now. So now we got the game clock set up. You can do the same thing for the penalty clock as well. Just do the same thing. Click on the button you want for the penalty clock to be controlling it. Go to penalty clock on the component and hit add. Do the same thing for all the other ones. Make sure they're all connected. And if you really want to double check what's connected, you could actually click on the penalty component right here. And then there's point B connections here. So this is all the components that are currently connected and you could remove it from here as well, just like you can remove it from here. But to test this out, if you hit start, this one's moving, this one's not, you stop it. This one stops working, you hit reset, it goes back to its default time. And then let's set it to like five seconds. Now it's five seconds left. But here's what's really cool. Sure, you can have two timers, which not many software applications are capable of doing right now for programs like OBS that I have seen at the moment. But what's really cool about this software is you are actually able to make it so when the game clock expires out of time. So let's set the game, uh, the penalty to two minutes. So when the game clock expires, we'll set this to five seconds. When this time stops working, like at zero seconds, this will stop if you do this correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect these two timers together. So because the game clock, uh, I want the game clock to make this time right here stop. Um, we're going to make it so the game clock is connected to the penalty clock. So you're going to click on the game clock, not the penalty clock, click on the game clock and go down to connections. And you can see the only component you can connect it to right now is the penalty clock. So click add for that. So now here's what's going to happen. Well, actually, let's add in another set of buttons first. So you could actually make it so these buttons can connect to both of these at the same time. All you got to do is click add to both of them. So now these two buttons are added to both. So now this start button will control both and this stop button will control both. But these buttons still control it individually. I should have mentioned that first. I apologize if there's any confusion. But back to the connection of the two clocks to each other is because we went to the game clock and had this be connected directly to the penalty clock, now when the game clock expires, the penalty clock will stop t counting down. So let's hit start. Both timers are going to start counting down. When this goes to zero, this is going to stop counting down. And pretty cool. It stops counting down. Uh, this is very helpful for games like ice hockey because when the game clock expires, the penalty clock is supposed to start, stop counting down as well. So that's pretty important for sports like ice hockey. Uh, you could also use this feature for things like shot clocks in basketball 
or if you want to use it for um use it for football's play clock which is like 40 seconds for each play to run um if you do it vice versa though let's remove this real quick reset these two timers uh, or set this to five seconds. Let's say we remove the connection here and we do the connection to the game clock from the penalty clock and do it backwards. If you hit start now, when this clock expires, the penalty clock is going to keep counting down because the connection is backwards. So basically, you want it to be the game clock to be connected to the penalty clock and not vice versa. And the reason that's important is... Uh, it gets things uh, properly in order. So now if you have it the way we had it before, where the game clock is selected and you connect the penalty clock this way and you hit start, when the penalty clock expires, the game clock will keep counting down because the penalty clock is less important than the game clock based on the way we organized it. It might be a little confusing at first, but basically once you get the hand of it, it is actually very useful. Just make sure to not get it backwards because otherwise uh, it'll it'll uh, not do what you want to do. If you need to rewatch that part, please do. But for now, that's pretty much going to do it for this video because we are about 11 minutes into the video. Um, if you need to rewatch any part of this video for the game clock or the time components, uh, use this video to understand more about the time components. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you about the point and the stats format. Uh, if you need more help before any of the videos are posted, please go to the Discord link down below, where the download link will also be provided um, to the software, which is downloadable from their GitHub. Either way, that's going to do it for this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.